Today on Refined, the eyes of the pop culture world are on Seattle. This is an opportunity to learn why everyone else loves Marvel Comics. We have a sneak peek of the new exhibit that has comic book geeks freaking out. Never cross me again. I saved you. Then ABC's scandal goes out with a bang. We get the inside scoop on tonight's red hot grand finale from one of its biggest stars. I just can't wait for everybody to see it. I think you're going to love it. Plus, OMG, it's Kenny G. The Seattle superstar talks music, movies, and mains, only with refined. Oh, I, my hair was way better than Michael Bolton. His hair was, his hair was long, but it wasn't, it didn't have the right, it, you know, it wasn't, it didn't have the right conditioning. Hey, it's Kenny G here, and Seattle Refined starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. You know, a lot of famous people have come out of Seattle. Chris Pratt, Kurt Cobain, Hillary Swank, just to name a few. But there's one hometown celeb who's smoother than the rest. Musician Kenny G is a local jazz legend. Born and raised in Seattle, Kenny G graduated from Franklin High and the University of Washington. From there, he became one of the biggest artists of all time, selling more than 75 million records worldwide. So when Kenny G recently came back to perform at Jazz Alley, Refine's Malia Karlinski couldn't wait to meet him. Will you do a little bit of Songbird? Uh. That's easy. That's why all the girls are swooning over you all well, the time. maybe so. How many babies have been made to that song? <laughs> well, I don't know. Ask my attorney. <laughs> Those smooth sounds could only belong to Seattle's own Kenny G. For more than four decades, the saxophonist has been the Pied Piper of jazz, captivating audiences all over the world with his music. 1986's Songbird was his first bona fide hit. But it's a really special song also because I performed it on the Johnny Carson show and that exposure was so big and nobody had heard music like that. Fortunately for me, they reacted well to it, and so I got a career out of it. He may not be one to toot his own horn, but Kenny G is the biggest selling instrumental musician of the modern era, with over 75 million albums sold. So you are one of the best selling artists of all time, right? I mean, does, does that blow your mind? Yeah, that does blow my mind, yeah. It all started when Kenny Gorelick attended Seattle's Franklin High, and his band teacher tapped him to fill in on soul singer Barry White's tour. Back in the 70s, he was, big, he was as big as they got. You know, I was in his little um, orchestra for uh, three gigs. So I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. I got paid, I'm playing my sax, so I'll just keep trying to do this. In 1982, Kenny signed his first major label contract with Arista. In an era of MTV synth pop, Kenny's sound was a breath of fresh air. The hits kept coming with songs like The Moment, Going Home, and Silhouette. And it wasn't just his horn that made him famous, it was also that hair. Back in the 80s, 90s, let me ask you this, who had better hair, you or Michael Bolton? Oh, I, my hair was way better than Michael Bolton. I mean, I'll say that, I mean, he has, his hair was, his hair was long, but it wasn't, it didn't have the right, you know, it wasn't, it, it didn't have the right conditioning. Oh, uh, what about you and Richard Marks? He also had some nice hair. My, my hair was way better than his. his he had the, he had that the what, mullet. mullet, yeah. By the way, we're still friends. He's interested in flying and I'm a You're pilot. You're a pilot, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, he wants to go flying with me, but he's a little bit, a little nervous. Flying and golf are his passions, but for Kenny G, discipline is the name of the game. I like anything that requires skill and patience and time to get good at. I like any of those things because there won't be very many people that do it. That's why saxophone playing appeals to me, it's the same thing. How many hours a day do you practice with saxophone still? Three. Three hours a day? Three. For how many years, 30 years or more? Or more, doing that? or more. That's incredible. Yeah. Speaking of time, he tends to keep his friendships forever, including one with bandmate Robert Damper. We went to high school together. How long have you been making music together? Uh, probably about on and off for about four years. We're still having fun. Kenny G is a serious musician who loves music and loves making people laugh. Kenny G! He's had steam ceiling turns as a fantasy best friend in this Funny or Die video and in the comedy A Bad Mom's Christmas. Get the f out, 
Kenny G? I'm still getting paid, right? I don't know. Take your little flute and shoot. Shoot fly. Okay, okay. Go make another album. It's not a flute. I think that's the funniest part of the whole movie. <laughs> I think so, too, actually. <laughs> it's a pretty funny line. He may live in L.A. now, but with family, including his dad and friends here, Seattle is still where Kenny G's roots are. It's one in a million to have a career like mine. Yeah. It just is. It doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. Just, just like, you know, things happen. Well, the, the stars line up and something magical happened. And, and we got Kenny G. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> you got him. <laughs> he was made. He was so, made to make music. That's right. I was, actually. And to spread this beautiful, beautiful music. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. Kenny G will be touring for the next few months, and he's working on a collection of romantic songs called New Standards. To learn more about Kenny G or Jazz Alley, check out our website. From jazz to gin and juice, I do like a little rap, and I actually know a few Snoop Dogg songs. And there's awesome news for diehard fans. Snoop Dogg will perform at Kent Showwear Center this Saturday for Snoop's Wellness Retreat Tour. At last check, tickets are still on sale. There was a lot of star power at a magical event in Portland. Wizard World Comic Con took over the Rose City this past weekend at the Oregon Convention Center. Our photographer spotted Sebastian Stan from the Captain America franchise, Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones and Aquaman, and even Henry Winkler from Happy Days. The celeb sightings didn't stop there. To see who else came to Wizard World, head to SeattleRefined.com. People in Seattle can really let their geek flag fly at a new Mopop exhibit. Marvel Universe of Superheroes will open to the public this weekend, but thanks to our superhero powers, we find already got a sneak peek inside. If hearing names like Spider-Man, The Hulk, Black Panther, and Captain America get you excited, you're gonna love Mopop's new Marvel Universe of Superheroes exhibit. And even if you're not a huge comic fan, Chief Curator Ben Saunders says, This is an opportunity to learn why everyone else loves Marvel comics. Ben and his team have assembled an astonishing collection of screen-used Marvel movie props. Captain America Shield, check. Iron Man armor, check. Guardians of the Galaxy cassette player, check. Black Panther costumes, check. There is so much to see. There are over 300 objects on display. Many, many pieces of original comic art, but also costumes and props from 10 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe films and things from all the new TV shows, uh, including one of my favorites, Luke Cage's bullet-ridden hoodie. So I understand that everything here on display is authentic, Absolutely. but there's one problem. Yeah. If that's Thor's real hammer, how did you get it there? Because only Thor can pick it up. <laughs> You know, all right, do you want the truth? Yeah, I do. Uh, well, A, it's a prop. I'm sorry. So it weighs about eight ounces? So I could pick up Thor's Absolutely, hammer? Absolutely, we all could. Yeah. I'm sure you could anyway. You yeah. seem like a true hero to me. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. There's actual comics, too, like this early Spider-Man, and... So this is it. This is number one of Marvel ever, right? This is the very first Marvel comic, before the company was even called Marvel, actually. There's more than one of these, but a lot of the things in this exhibit, there's only one, right? Yes. One such item is this piece of original art from Marvel number one, believed to be the only example in the world. This page is joined by tons of other super rare, super cool, original comic art. A lot of people have never seen original comic book art, and you get to see details of brushwork, pencil work, paste-ups, whiteout, corrections, all of these things that you would never get to see. Here, you can also hang out with the thing, if that's your thing, or don Iron Man's armor in virtual reality. So cool. So I know it was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but you really put together a super exhibit. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you saying that. John Prentice, Seattle, Refine. Marvel Universe of Superheroes opens this Saturday. Coming up on Seattle Refined, some art is normal and some is downright seedy. If you see me in your yard in West Seattle, um, I'm, I'm taking your seeds. Meet the local artists whose masterpieces require both patience and pods. But first, after seven nail-biting seasons, Scandal's final episode is tonight. Time's up. We're coming for you. We'll try to get one of the show's biggest stars to spill the tea about tonight's blockbuster ending. Welcome back to Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. There's equal parts sadness and anticipation around the Refined office today as one of our favorite shows, ABC Scandal, gets ready for its blistering finale tonight. 
Here's how this works. You give me counsel, I make decisions. You support no. that decision. Actually, no that's not at all. You ever cross me cross again? You, I saved you. It's jaw-dropping drama like that that has made scandal must-see TV for seven seasons now. But all good things must end. And tonight, we find out if there's a sliver of hope that Olivia Pope can live happily ever after. We find Britt Thorson sat down with star Bellamy Young to get the scoop on Scandal Swan Song. So I gotta say, I put out a tweet yesterday saying, hey, I'm gonna be talking to Melly. Do you have any questions for her? The final episode coming up. And about 5% gave me questions and about 95% just gave me crying face emojis about it being the final episode. People are wrecked about this. Yeah, well, I agree with people. I'm wrecked about it too. I can't believe it. What are the chances that you and I can kind of work something out right now together? Just extend it just a couple more seasons you know, we get a little give and take. We got some good chances here. Can we negotiate? Listen, you'd have all the actors in in a heartbeat. I mean, we'd come to your kitchen, and you can make up stories, and we'll act them out. I mean, we love these jobs. It's just um, Shonda knew in her heart where the story ended, and now we, we've come to that point. It's so sad. And if anyone knows, it's Shonda. That's for sure. <laughs> we can all we can all trust her. Yes. Exactly, especially when we saw the finale. It's, she knew, she knew. That's exactly what I was just gonna ask you. T kind of set the stage for me on reading that final script and the emotions that kind of went, went through without giving spoilers. But it was crazy because we even, we were in D.C. shooting the second to last episode uh, and we couldn't figure out what was going to happen. We knew she only had 42 minutes of story left and we could we just all wanted to live. <laughs> um, but we couldn't imagine how it was going to go and we sat down for the table read and... You know, we sit at table reads like we sit with everybody on Thursday night because that's where we find out all the information. We know nothing going in. And it was so satisfying. It's as hilarious as it is heartbreaking. It's jaw-dropping. It's conversation-moving. It's She just is a once-in-a-lifetime storyteller, and she pulled that little boat right into port impeccably. It's everybody that does survive. Ooh. Like, we'll live on forever because she serves the paths that they were on. So, with such integrity and dignity. And, ugh, I love it. I hope you'll love it, too. So, one of the main questions also in that 5% of, t of tweets that came back to me was a really great question in there from a lady named Carrie. And she said, what would you have season 7 Melly tell season 1 Melly? Wow. Um, God, that is a great question. <sighs> Uh, play the long game. Uh, but I feel like Melly already knew that. I know this is going to be hard to boil down into one thing, but what are you going to miss the most about Scandal? It's, a, I mean, everything is the actual honest answer, but, you know, spending my time with this open-hearted, hardworking, loving bunch of people. Also getting scripts that if I got one of them a lifetime and did it for two years on Broadway, I'd say, oh, job of a lifetime. But they came every week at us, so beautiful. and. God, and then I, you know, got to share them with these wonderful people. And so all these Thursday nights that we spent with people around the world in such a personal way, uh, I will miss that. Bellamy, thank you so much for not only taking the time to talk with me today, but for bringing Melly to life in such a beautiful, badass way. We are going to miss her and you and the whole crew uh, so much. Thank you so much again, and congratulations Brett, on you. an amazing run. Have a beautiful day. I hope you love the finale. The Scandal Finale tees off tonight at 10, right here on Como 4. Coming up on Seattle Refined, which used items do Seattleites want the most? Plus, beautiful masterpieces, but there's more than meets the eye to these appealing portraits. Here at Seattle Refined, we never get tired of hearing from you. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Guard Swanson. Seattle weather can be unpredictable this time of year, but three things are always certain. Death, taxes, and tulips. And those April flowers are not disappointing this year. Refine's roving photographer, Cy Bean, just got back from capturing the beautiful and colorful tulips that overtake Skagit Valley this time of year. The photos are just incredible. To check them all out, head to seattlerefine.com.
It's hard to believe that all of those tulips were once a small bulb, but a seed doesn't have to grow to be beautiful. Sometimes seeds can transform into art. From far away, these pieces look like normal works of art. But look closer. There's more than meets the eye. Well, when you see it up close, it's just wow. Becky Hoover doesn't need a fancy studio to unleash her creativity. She creates unique artwork every day from her West Seattle bedroom. Well, this is seed art, crop art is what it's called. Instead of paint and brushes, she just needs a toothpick, seeds, and a lot of patience. And I pick up a little seed and I lay it down. And then I have some pieces that can take up to 50 hours for the bigger ones. Well, we've got yellow split peas here. We've got sunflower seeds. This is bright green jade rice. I forage for a lot of it. And um, if you see me in your yard in West Seattle, um, I'm, I'm taking your seeds. Becky first learned about the craft at an art show two years ago. It's gone from a hobby to a passion that's now paying off. This kind of just started as a selfish thing that I made pieces for myself. Um, and I just started posting pictures and people asked to buy them. So that kind of gave me the idea, eh, maybe I should put these up on my Etsy store too. Uh, the biggest commission I think I got so far is $350 per piece. This is the first piece I ever did. You can tell because the seeds are big. And then this one right here, this is Jareth, the Goblin King from Labyrinth, one of my favorite movies growing up. And obviously David Bowie with lots of pine needles on his head. And then this is my personal favorite piece. This is a snake I did and he's got sunflower seed scales. Seed art is pretty unique in the Northwest. It's more of a Midwest tradition. At first, Becky didn't know why she was drawn to it so much, but quickly learned it's in her blood. So I was doing my seed art and loving it, and then I went to visit my sister in San Francisco, and I saw these two pieces of art on her wall. So I asked about these two paintings that my sister had of gravel art, and she said that my grandpa had made them. And so for me, that was just, it all clicked right then. I'm like, wow, this runs in the family, this, this need to do tiny, tedious, obsessive little things. So I came home immediately and recreated those gravel art pieces, and I have, I have them hanging proudly over my bed. These pieces are more than just a labor of love for Becky. It's also helping her live a better life. Well, my whole adult life, I've kind of gone back and forth struggling with sobriety, and it's been a huge driving force to, to have goals and to have, you know, something to fill my time with something good and positive. It's a very therapeutic for me to do this, to really dig in and focus, and I think about it more than I think about drinking. So when I have a piece going, um, it's a lot easier for me to stay clean and sober. Oh, it's absolutely the best high I, I could imagine. It's wonderful. I, I can't describe the feeling when you're in the zone and it just clicked in and you're just going for it. And I can sit there for five, six hours uh, without a break. It's my me time and I love it. It's euphoric. I love the feeling. To learn more about Becky Seed Art, head to SeattleRefine.com. Seattle is a hub for artistic people, and that really rings true when it comes to women photographers. SeattleRefine.com profiled four fierce female photographers who are making waves in Seattle. They shoot everything from families to fashion to weddings and concerts. These women really do it all. To see their photo galleries, head to our website. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. With people spring cleaning right now, you can bet there's a lot of old furniture being thrown out and it can be tough to sell. But we have some tips for you. Refine.com writer Gina Weinkoop compiled a list of top furniture that sells best in Seattle and the price it usually goes for. For example, people in Seattle apparently are always looking for a good microwave. To check out the list, head to SeattleRefine.com. All right, that's going to do for today's show. I'm Gard Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refine.